let's go a mail bag wild week of content we got a lot of your comments to get to including this question and i really do want to investigate this idea a must get recruit do they exist we're going to talk that and more let's get to it let's go lewis Emory and Quincy both have to be five stars in the near future, or it's definitely a conspiracy. <laughs> I love a good conspiracy theory, Lewis. I'm not going to lie. So I understand uh, Emory and Quincy have both shot themselves up the rankings, Emory Jones and Quincy Wiggins. We'll get to that in just a second, but I do want to discuss potentially who the next prospect might be that will commit to LSU. I think when you look at the elite Louisiana prospects, yes, it stunk that Le'Veon Moss committed to Alabama, but everything seems to be trending in the right direction for Shaz Preston, Kendrick Law. <laughs> Another burp, two videos in a row. How about that? And obviously, Ember Jones and Quincy Wiggins. So, look, I, I love all that. That's all great news. But all those guys have had LSU offers for quite some time. And we knew all those guys were good. I think the next prospect that could commit, and the one that also happened to help himself out the most, is Fitzgerald West, a three-star out of Lafayette Christian Academy. Of course, that's where Sage Ryan's from. And then, of course, Jordan Allen, a three-star safety in the class of 2022, who's also waiting for his LSU offer. He also plays corner. So, Out of anyone, Fitzgerald West might be the next one to jump on this LSU offer as a two-way player, a potential offensive lineman for Ed Orgeron. So, you know, I I think that's the name to look out for. Now, as far as Emory and Quincy being five stars in the near future, so Quincy is in the 150-ish range, and Emory Jones, yes, he's been very impressive. He's obviously one of the best guards in the country. It is going to take a lot for them to be a five-star. That means you have to be one of the top 35-ish players in the country. It's about 35 to 45 stars per cycle. Probably a little less than that in some classes. So, yes, they both have shot up. Both these two look a lot better since in in in-person evaluations have, have started. So, yes, I mean, it is possible for one of them to even shoot up in the top 100 before the next season begins but all the way up to five star I mean that's going to be tough but here's the thing in the grand scheme for them individually it doesn't really matter Alrighty, my favorite comment of the week here is from 337 bow if we had Joe Brady Arch Manning would be a lock at LSU we absolutely need to land Arch he's a freaking Manning Ed and staff went to Newman right after winning the natty That's not a coincidence. Everything with Arch is riding on how our offense does this year. Now, a few things before we get into this comment. I love Lafayette. It's pretty interesting how many Lafayette viewers have 337 in their handle. You guys really love to rep Lafayette, and I think that's great because it is a fine city. And also, Bo, this is awesome spending time with your daughter or, or, or niece uh, I think this is great. I love the 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 girl dads on this channel. We have quite a few. Trey being um, one of the many. Jared, whoever you want to mention. I just think that's fantastic. And then also we have Bo on the bike and the Shaquille O'Neal throwback. Now, I say those nice things because there's a lot about this comment that I disagree with. Starting off with needing Arch Manning. And it's not just... LSU's quarterback room is loaded. We'll get to that in a second. It's this idea that you must land a recruit, and this recruit is a must-get. Now, it's funny because before I even, you know, hit a 1,000 subscribers or anything, I was just producing videos and ideas that I'm very passionate about, and this was one of our first recruiting videos we've ever done on this channel, the myth of the must-get recruit. It's a myth. There's no such thing as a must-get recruit. It's never existed. And there's a lot of reasons as to why. Now, of course, there are some recruits that could transform your team. I am not saying that any one recruit can't have a major impact on your school. However, 
this idea that you absolutely need to land this one player for your program to have success is just not true, and it can get you in a lot of trouble. Remember, LSU's going to be fine. Alabama's going to be fine. Insert any program name. They're going to be fine whether or not player X or player five-star whoever goes to the school. It's just true. I remember a few years ago, the meltdown around Patrick Sertan Jr. And then Dylan Moses and Tim Williams. And all three of those guys exceeded expectations at Alabama. They were all really freaking good. They all made it to the NFL, especially Sertan. He was incredible. But LSU was still fine. And look, they would have been better with those three guys. Absolutely but they were still fine, okay? So it doesn't mean that getting player X doesn't make your school better. It's just that you don't need player X for your school to get better. It it doesn't matter who it is. And I understand that there are the, the Trevor Lawrences and the Deshaun Watsons of the world out there, but after Trevor Lawrence left, guess what? This tweet here from Josh Pate, Clemson is still a 21-point favorite over everyone on their schedule, not named Georgia. So, look... LSU's best recruit of all time was a transfer. And there's just so many variables when it comes to recruiting. It's just not worth it. It, It's not worth doing whatever to get any one certain recruit. And I know you all are thinking of a certain player. We'll get to him in a second. But even with Arch Manning, you look at the LSU quarterback room, I would say Arch Manning is as close to a need recruit if LSU was in the position they were five years ago or 10 years ago when we were on such a crazy quarterback drought. But LSU is not on a quarterback drought. In fact, the quarterback recruiting has never been better, especially considering LSU already has a five-star locked in in the class before. And I don't know how 337 Bo or whoever out there feels about Walker Howard, but if you think Walker Howard is going to be special then that dampens the impact that Walk, that, that Arch Manning could have on the program anyway. So that's also something else to keep in mind is that only one quarterback plays, and oftentimes when a quarterback starts, he starts for at least two seasons. And that doesn't include Garrett Nussmeyer. That doesn't include Eli Holstein and Ricky Collins. And that doesn't include, you know, Max Johnson with four years of eligibility remaining. So, you know, First of all, you don't need any one recruit. doesn't exist. And especially at quarterback, LSU in its current current state has never been better. Now, you could think Arch Manning is a better prospect than anyone LSU has, which makes a lot of sense. He is way higher rated than anyone not named Walker Howard. But still, it's, it's this idea that you need to get someone. And, you know, especially with the case with Arch Manning, we touched on this in our Arch Manning video earlier this week. Uh, You know, he is fantastic, but there's going to be a lot more with Arch Manning. And that's not anything he put on himself. He didn't ask for any of this attention. He doesn't even have any social media handles at all. Uh, It's just the hype surrounding a Manning. And once again, I can't wait to see what his NIL checks are going to be. That's going to be pretty interesting. I would be shocked if he doesn't make at least a million dollars on brand deals when he's in college. Dead serious. If we had Joe Brady, he'd be a lock at LSU. I'm not sure about that. The the first thing here is, obviously, there are other great offensive coordinators uh, in the SEC. Take, for instance, Lane Kiffin at um, Arch Manning's grandfather and uncle's alma mater, which would be very tempting to continue that Ole Miss tradition. And then, of course, you have Steve Sarkeesian and Texas, who Arch Manning is very much interested in. And then, of course, you know, you have Alabama. And so, you know, even if Joe Brady, as great as he is, was there at LSU, there were other great offensive coordinators that are going to entertain uh, Arch Manning. And on top of that, let's bring in Eric Gilbert to the conversation. If Joe Brady had been at LSU, we would have locked in Arch Manning. Everything with Arch is riding on how our offense does this year which is pretty fascinating. And the reason why I say that is because the reason why Eric Gilbert committed to LSU is because of two reasons. Uh, The first is Joe Brady. Joe Brady was one of Eric Gilbert's primary recruiters. And a big reason why Eric Gilbert came to LSU 
was because of the way the 2019 offense looked. Now, the reason why that's fascinating is because Eric Gilbert had no ties to LSU prior to coming to LSU. So that's different than, let's say, Kayshawn Butte, who is a five-star, but he grew up in Louisiana and he dreamed of playing with LSU. Eric Gilbert, outside of what happened in 2019, didn't really have many ties outside of Joe Brady and and John DeCoster, the tight ends coach at the time who left. Um, so what happened was Eric Gilbert committed to an offensive scheme and a coach. And as many of you know, when you commit to, if 90% of the reason why you commit to a school is the coach, well, that coach can leave. You know, outside of Nick Saban um, and a few others, there's not many coaches that you could see. I mean, most coaches are going to bounce around, particularly uh, assistants. So the reason why I say that is because you never want to recruit to commit to a school simply because of a coach or an offensive idea. Now, I'm not comparing Arch Manning to Eric Gilbert, but this happens a lot with recruits. They commit to a coach and an idea instead of committing to the school, instead of committing to the city, instead of committing to an area where you're going to be. If you're a recruit watching this, and I actually do get quite a few messages from recruits, and I appreciate you guys watching the channel, I will give you to me the most important advice. Take the biggest bag. You get that McDonald's sack and you run, baby. Let's go. I'm I'm kidding. But still, take the bag. <laughs> I don't know what happens behind the scenes with how all that happens. I, I have heard different stories. Uh, I heard a story of, of a fishing trip. Getting invited to a random fishing trip and you just take the ice chest, and the ice chest doesn't have fish in it. It has stacks. So anyway, uh, that's one of many. I know you guys probably have uh, crazier stories. Uh, but look, that aside, that money would, would leave, is going to eventually evaporate. You need to go where you're the happiest. Now, coaching schemes and whatnot, they are very important. Um, don't go somewhere where you don't fit into a defensive or offensive scheme. And you should take that into account, but that's also very volatile. And recruits come in and out, transfers come in and out, and your spot on the roster might not be where you think it is. So that's why the most important thing you can control is where you're the happiest. And obviously this comment started with Arch Manning. If Arch Manning is happy in Baton Rouge, you know, he is his own person. I, I don't get these comments, Arch is not going to LSU. I got so many of these arches. Not How do we even know <laughs> what he himself wants to do? Uh, so he's like one of the few recruits that doesn't even have social media. So we don't know a whole lot about where he's actually going to be the happiest. So you as a recruit, once again, if you are a recruit watching this, your happiness is only something that you can decide. It's not your mom. It's not your coach. It's not where your family wants you to go. If you're a Louisiana prospect and you want to go to Alabama, go go where you feel is, you're, you're the happiest. If you're an Alabama prospect and you want to go to LSU, be the next Quan Alexander. Be the next Neil Farrell. Be the next Jamarcus Russell and come to LSU. Just do what you feel it, it makes you happy because that's something that you yourself can control the area you're you're in isn't going to change coaches change rosters change it's going to be even more uh fluid especially with the transfer portal now more than ever so 337 both thank you so much for your comment uh even though i disagreed with a lot of it but i th this is what's fun about this channel i'm open to different ideas uh and and discussions so obviously you guys are gonna have a lot of comments about what i had to say but Let's keep this train moving. Here's Jason. Tommy Casanova played both ways for LSU as well. Very interesting when we were doing our Derek Stingley piece. And then we also mentioned Chad Jones in a video. So it's interesting. You know, we always talk about the future and we're so fascinated with LSU recruits. Um, we don't really talk about past LSU players other than on live streams when you guys really get hype talking about the past of LSU. When I do videos on past LSU players or LSU players in the pros, it just doesn't generate much interest. So 
I kind of like it when you guys comment names of, of former LSU icons, like a Tommy Casanova. When you go in Tiger Stadium, you'll see his number 37 up there. And then, of course, you know, Chad Jones, who he's Chad Jones, dreadlocks of doom. Whether you're an LSU baseball or LSU football fan, you know the name Chad Jones. So I like hearing names such as that and from a former player's perspective. And I'm not a former player, but... If I were, I'd be really excited knowing that LSU just labeled Jack Marucci, their longtime uh, team physician, um, into a new role that's going to help LSU players, um, former players, uh, stay involved with the university. I haven't really read too much into it, but you know, I saw guys like Will Blackwell comment, and that's good. I, you know, these players put it on the line for the purple and gold, and they deserve you know, as much recognition and help as they possibly can because a lot of these players, you know, once they leave college, they can't get their footing. And, you know, Will's had a successful post-college career, but there's other guys who who just kind of get lost in the fray. So I I think this is really good for LSU all around. Dexico waiting at the Popeyes line while watching this. Line is easily 20 cars plus deep. So this has been keeping me busy. Awesome video, Carter. Go Tigers. Ah, this is from our Derek Stingley Jr. deep dive. Now, I have a bone to pick with some of you guys. But first, there's nothing like waiting in that Popeye's line while also getting some PHL live content. Baby, let's go, Dex. That's heaven right there. You're about to get a chicken sandwich. And on top of that, you're getting... An awesome video we did on Derek Stingley Jr. Now, I have gotten a lot of inquiries. Is that how you say that word? Inquiries? Anyway, I've gotten a lot of uh, questions about Derek Stingley Jr. playing on offense. And what I decided to do was do a really long, deep dive into this very complicated question. The only problem is not a whole lot of you watched it. Well... A lot of you did watch it, it just didn't do as well as some of the other recruiting content. So, a lot of that is algorithm. The video did release a little bit later than our normal release time because it was such a a deep dive that I not only ripped audio from different interviews for, I also did a huge poll with you guys. So, what we're going to do is I'm not going to respond to any comments because so many of you have yet to see the video yet. It is floating in the top right corner of your screen. So watch it, please. It really is eye-opening because at first, I was so anti-Derek Stingley Jr. playing offense. And I kind of sort of am, but I did open up just a little bit with some of the research I did with the history of two-way players. But the most important thing is the video was really long. I still think, though, Dexago, this is what I want to know. Were you able to finish a video before you actually got your food? Because that Popeye's line could be hellacious, man. You can order a three-piece spicy, be the, first, be the fifth person in line, and you have to wait 45 minutes. But it's well worth the wait. And it's not quite 45 minutes because the ladies at Popeye's and obviously the gentlemen at Popeye's, they do a great job. And Popeye's, I want you to sponsor my channel. That would be a dream sponsorship scenario. Popeye's, I'm looking at you. I hope you enjoyed this mailbag video today. And in fact, I'm going to make it easy for you. Our Derek Stingley Jr. deep dive is floating right there in front of your face. Click it. Watch it. I spent a lot of time on it, of course. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom! Chicken wings, lemon pepper, night two. Let's go!